What's going on, everyone? So right now, prices are high. Teams, you're already starting to hear the reports of like, you know, Brandon Ingram is more likely sticking it out with the, the Pelicans this year. The Pelicans are expecting to bring him in and not trade him because there is no market for him. But they don't have any intentions on actually uh, re-signing Brandon Ingram at, at the price that he wants. They'd be willing to sign Brandon Ingram for a much cheaper discounted price, but they don't want to sign him for the discount they want. They're willing to kind of let him walk. You're getting the reports about Zach Levine, right? Zach Levine, the the Bulls, they kind of feel like they're, they're kind of like, ah, no one wants Zach Levine. There's no market for him. We don't want to have to sell the farm to give him up. So, you know, we're probably going to have to take him in. You're hearing all those reports. It's easy to say that now. Something I talk about all the time in these types of videos is once you get closer to training camp, all those things really start to come and rear their ugly head, right? All of a sudden, it's like, you know, you get the reports of like, hey, DeMar DeRozan was the mediator between Billy Donovan and Zach Levine. There's no more DeMar DeRozan. Are Zach Levine and Billy Donovan, are they going to be able, are they going to keep bumping heads? And now you don't have DeMar DeRozan as that middleman? And now they're, they're you know, at each other's throat, like what's going to happen there? Right, Brandon Ingram, do the Pelicans get to the point where it's like, man, do we really want this looming over the season? We're trying to win. We just got DeJounte Murray. Do we want Brandon Ingram on the roster? And he's upset and disgruntled. And, you know, and it's just like he's not a fit that we're, we're trying to, you know, we're going a different direction. And now we got to start him over the guys that we want to start. Like, all of a sudden, that conversation starts changing. Those thoughts start coming in. Even guys like Jeremy Grant, like Portland. Right? They want to free up space for some of their young guys. They want to tank. And, you know, Cooper Flag, he, he's a guy on the horizon. So you see all these teams that are kind of just like, all right, like, you know, right now we're good. Everything starts creeping in, right? But regardless, even if the training camp thing doesn't work out, right, let's say the Lakers do have to run it in. I know the whole, you know, you got December 15th, you got January 15th. That's when, like, guys start becoming available for trade. Those are usually the two dates in which guys that sign, depending on when they sign, depending on the types of contracts, boom, you can start trading them. And then also can you get closer to the trade deadline. I don't want the Lakers to wait till the trade deadline. I don't. I would prefer the Lakers to get their roster stacked ready to go. And if you do do a trade at the trade deadline, it's kind of like that marginal, like, hey, can we upgrade this guy? Or, hey, you know what? We could use another shooter, right? Let's go, let's go grab another shooter type guy, right? Like you're just doing like a minor move or two, unless there's something just great on the market where you're like, man, we really got to get this guy, right? Like, you know, outside of that, you, you kind of want your roster intact. So I would prefer that the Lakers do that. However, no trade is better than a bad trade. And if there's nothing there, don't do it, right? I mean, you're hearing reports of like D'Angelo Russell and basically D'Angelo Russell being neutral to negative value and teams aren't really jumping at the gun to go trade for him. Right now, his contract doesn't really have the value it has because all the teams, basically, if even if they are trading guys, right? Like they're looking at it as like, okay, we want... A certain pack we want a certain thing right teams aren't in the salary dump stage right teams aren't in the hey let's take d'angelo russell would be very valuable because he's 18.7 million in an expiring deal teams don't really get to that point until the trade deadline once you get to the trade deadline, all of a sudden you have all these teams that thought they were going to be good that aren't. You have all these teams that are better than they wanted to be, and they're trying to tank and get draft picks, so they want to unload guys. All of a sudden you have this, this influx of players that teams are like, hey, I would love to get off of this guy's salary or get off of half of his salary, right? Like a Jeremy Grant, right? Maybe a Jeremy Grant trade doesn't get done right now, but... You get to the trade deadline, and now maybe Portland's like, hey, well, if we take on Jeremy Grant, or if we take on D'Angelo Russell, right, we play him for half the season, and then his money falls off, we clear $18.7 million of that $30 million off of our books, right? Like, now, all of a sudden, there is a little bit more incentive for teams to make that push, to, to try to go, you know, clear something or go, or go clear off some salary, Right? It's just like the the Russell Westbrook trade, right? Great example. This time, you know, 
that season, talk about when we traded Russ, right? This time that season, all the prices were insane. Remember, th- there was reports that it was impossible for the Lakers to t- take the Andrew or uh, Russell Westbrook. No one, I mean, a lot of the same stuff we're hearing about D'Lo right now. He's not making forty million; he's only making eighteen point seven million, right? He has no value. You have to give up two first just to unload. Rust. That's not even counting getting players back. Utah was always an option. Utah rumors were in that offseason, but they didn't want to give you Jared Vanderbilt. They wanted Rudy Gay, Mike Conley, and Malik Beasley. They wanted to do that. They were willing to take on Russell Westbrook, but they wanted both first. You know, all your picks, they wanted the farm. Then you got to training camp, and then it was like, all right, fine. Tell you what, we'll give you the same guys Rudy Gay, Mike Conley, Malik Beasley, take on Russell Westbrook, but We want both your first. Okay, we'll do one protected, one unprotected. No, uh, and then you hear the the Pacers trade, which actually would have gotten done, but Jeannie ended up vetoing it, which was the Buddy Heald and Miles Turner uh, for Russ and two unprotected first. That's a deal that would have, if Jeannie didn't veto it, that would have been done. To this day, it kind of feels like they should have done that. But I digress, right? Thing is, is that like, then you got to the actual trade deadline and all of a sudden Russell Westbrook had all of this value and there were several teams that were interested in taking on Russell Westbrook and ultimately the Lakers ended up going with the Utah Jazz trade but they got Jared Vanderbilt all of a sudden Jared Vanderbilt was included all of a sudden they were able to get Malik Beasley all of a sudden they were able to get D'Angelo Russell instead of Mike Conley and they only had to give up one protected first rather than two Right? So all of a sudden, like the values became so more because Utah became a team that was like, uh, we're going to go this direction, which is what I was talking about earlier in the video, right? Like all of a sudden you get to the trade deadline and teams are better than they want to be and they want a different draft pick or they're this or they're that. And all of a sudden they're like, start unloading things and start clearing stuff off, right? Like, so, and on top of that, then you started seeing even more trades, right? Like, I mean, the, the Lakers were able to trade Patrick Beverly and Mo Bamba, and they were able, you know, and again, you start getting all these things because there's just so much more that teams are willing to, you know, relent on in order to, to get to where they want to get. You know, ah, man, we, we really shouldn't have signed this guy. Let's unload this guy to the Lakers, but he makes sense for the Lakers, right? You know, a team like, um, you know, like I said, maybe maybe Portland, right? Jeremy Grant. Right now, they want two firsts. They want Rui and Jared Vanderbilt. Rui, Jared Vanderbilt, two firsts is what, uh, based on reports, again, I don't know this personally, but based on reports, that's what supposedly the uh, Portland Trailblazers are trying to get in a trade, right? Well, come training camp, it might just be, hey, all right, tell you what, Rui and Vando in one first. You know, and maybe Lakers go, sure. Maybe Lakers go, nah, we'll rather wait and be patient, right? And then you get to... You get to the trade deadline, and all of a sudden, it's like, all right, fine. We'll do it for a protected first, right? You know, make it top five protected, whatever. And, you know, and it's like, okay, all right, fine. You can keep Vando. Just give us, like, Rui and D'Lo because we want to clear some salary, right? Now, all of a sudden, you got Jeremy Grant for a protected first, Rui and D'Lo. Boom, right? Like, I'm not saying that that is something that's guaranteed to happen, but those are the kind of things that usually happen through the progress. So, Ideally, in a perfect world, you get something done ASAP. Made a previous video talking about like the domino effect. We're all kind of waiting for like what's going to happen with Lori Marketing, right? Because Lori Marketing kind of feels like that first domino. That when that domino tips over, everything else can potentially start going off. It also could potentially uh, give up more options in the trade market, right? Because now, team like Utah, they may say, hey, you know what, let's trade Walker Kessler. Like, let's really make a push for Walker Kessler. Let's really make a push for this. You know, maybe they get Moses Moody and they're like, hey, you know what, we'd actually prefer to trade Moses Moody, right, rather than keep him, right? Maybe they start having a fire sale. But also, it could, well, one, it would take the Warriors off the market for other players. So there's another guy off the market. And it's kind of like the same handful of teams that you keep hearing over and over again that are trying to land a player. So you may end up seeing something to where, okay, Laurie Marketing gets traded, and now teams are more, okay, like, let, let's go, right? Where everyone's just kind of sitting and waiting. I mean, you even see it with free agency, right? Everyone's kind of waiting for that one player to sign, and then it's like, okay, depending on where and what that player signs for and how it all works, we'll see how that goes, 
right? So that is something to keep in mind as well, that you may get that first domino. Every, again, there hasn't been any real trades. Right? There was the Mikel Bridges trade, but that was just a huge overpay outlier trade. Everyone kind of understands. Everyone's kind of like, all right, like that was more of an anomaly than like setting the market. Like people were worried, oh no, that just set the market. And then you saw like the DeJounte Murray trade and DeJounte went for like half of what originally it was like, oh, okay, that's more closer to the market, right? But outside of that, in free agency, we haven't really gotten trades. It's all been sign-in trade deals. It's all been free agents that wanted more money that worked it out to be to get more money. Right? It wasn't like, hey, we're trading these guys and these picks for this guy. That like it wasn't, you know, your traditional standard trade, which is good, right? No news is better than bad news. The, the longer nothing's happening, the better it is for the Lakers. That means the Lakers can still be in play. They can keep poking, you know, like uh what is the the Stewie, right? Ma, mama, mama, like that thing, like you just keep poking and prodding and then finally what like you know it's like all right fine here take Jeremy Grant leave us alone type thing so fingers crossed see how it goes but anyway as always this is a discussion past question on you let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below what do they do you I mean I'm sure most people would prefer to get the trade done now get it done over with hands clean now you can go if the Lakers do pull off trade at the trade deadline, it's something minor, right? It's something like, ah, we're just, we just need another shooter or, you know, we could use a, a, another, you know, forward or something, or, you know, maybe one of the guards, like, can we swap this guard out, right? Like there's, there's always that, unless like, you know, a big player becomes available, but do you, do you want that? Are you okay with waiting until the trade deadline? Do you think like, it doesn't matter? Lakers are going to make a trade regardless. I mean, look, I've said it before. Rob Palenka has made a trade every season except for last season. Last season was the only season in which he didn't make a trade. He's made a trade every season. So based on his track record, probably going to make a trade at some point. But how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.